Thank you for joining us today. At the outset, I would like to convey my best wishes to you and your families for a new year. I also hope that you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy during this wave three of the pandemic. The operating environment in quarter three, financial year 22, has been quite challenging, with economic indicators becoming weak and unprecedented inflation impacting the input costs across the portfolio. In such an environment, strong execution by the DABA team has resulted in the highest ever consolidated revenue from operations of rupees 2,942 crores with a growth of 7.8% with last year. This is on a high base of 16% last year and brings us to the CAGR of around 11.8%. Consolidated profit, operating profit increased by 9.3% despite unprecedented inflation across categories. Profit before tax saw growth of 10% ahead of the top line. Our profit after tax crossed rupees 500 crores for the second time in a row, reaching rupees 503 crores during the quarter. Our strategy of focusing on market share gains continues to yield great results for the business. As a result, 100% of the portfolio saw market share gains during the quarter. In terms of the categories, food and beverage business posted a stellar growth of 38%. The juices and nectars market continued to witness a good recovery and we have outperformed the industry, leading to a market share gain of 540 basis points during the quarter. This is further bolstered by recent launches of real coolers, real season, real frappe, which have helped expand the total addressable market of our beverage portfolio. The food business under the homemade brand also performed very well with a growth of 26.4% driven by portfolio expansion and innovation. It is well poised to cross 100 crores for the year. Our home and personal care portfolio performed very well with 8.4% growth on a high base of 16%, driven by good momentum across all sub-segments of HPC. The toothpaste portfolio posted industry-leading growth of 8.1% in the quarter, despite a high base leading to a two-year CAGR of 18%. For the seventh quarter in a row, Red Toothpaste, our flagship brand, posted a double-digit growth riding on a strong Ayurvedic heritage and consumer pool. Our market share in toothpaste segment increased by 50 basis points and is on track for becoming the number two company in this category. Hairalls reported a growth of 6.1%, leading to a two-year CAGR of 8.8%. Our market shares in the overall hair oil category improved by 90 basis points. Even in the sub-segments of perfume oils and coconut oils, we have seen strong market share gains driven by marketing investments and distribution expansion. Our coconut oil brand, Anmol, has gained number two position in the pure coconut oil category. Shampoos performed very well in the quarter and recorded a growth of 21.2%. Our market shares in shampoo increased by 40 bits during the quarter. The salience of bottles continues to see an uptrend and was around 20% during the quarter, indicating a strong traction in the urban markets for our products. Recently, new product Vatika Ayurvedic Shampoo continues to exhibit a strong trajectory on back of good consumer acceptance. Home care reported a strong growth of 19%, driven by double-digit growth across Odonil and Odomos franchises. Odonil reported an increase in market share of 50 basis points in Odomos increased market share by 40 basis points. Skincare portfolio witnessed a robust growth of 20% with good traction in all the three brands, Femme, Oxy, and Gulabari. We have entered the face wash category recently, and the face washes are showing good early signs. Healthcare portfolio reported a marginal decline on a very high base of 28% last year. Despite that, a two-year Kegar remains in strong double-digit for the business. Health supplements, including Chavanprash and Honey, posted double-digit two-year CAGR, and brands continue to be salient in the consumer's mind. This was reflected in strong uptick in market shares, which in Chavanprash category went up by 200 basis points, and in Honey category went up by 180 basis points. We continue to be undisputed market leader in the Honey market with strong presence in all channels, e-commerce, modern trade, and general trade. The digestive portfolio registered a 12.2% growth on back of improvement in mobility and out-of-home consumption seen during the quarter. While COVID contextual OTC products saw some moderation, Hanitas and Shilajit saw
strong growth. Our ethical portfolio posted 8.3% growth. Among channels, we witnessed continued recovery in modern trade in quarter three with growth in mid teens Institutional business also exhibited a good turnaround. E-commerce business was slightly impacted on account of changes in the business model of the platform, but continues to contribute around 6 to 7% of our business. Our rural growth was ahead of the urban growth by around 500 bits, mainly on account of expansion of our reach and infrastructure in rural. International business recorded a constant currency growth of 8.7%. Egypt market grew by 13% and Namaste business posted a growth close to 20%. Turkey business was impacted by currency depreciation but saw mid-teen growth of 14% in constant currency. Nepal business performed well with a growth of 17.3%. Overall, our business continues to be on a good trajectory with increase in market shares across 100% of the portfolio. Category volume declines as shown by the syndicated data and inflation continue to be a cause of concern. But our focus on brand building, distribution expansion, innovation, efficiency enhancement, organization capability enhancement, and ESG focus should hold us in good stead in the future. With this, I bring my address to a close and open to Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their dust on telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avneesh Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Sir. My first question is on Turkey business. So, Turkish currency Lira was down 44% last year and was the worst emerging market currency. So your 14% constant currency growth is good, but wanted to understand uh, what are the changes in competition in that market in terms of localization and in input prices, the imported uh, uh, quantum. Any changes you have done in that market? Hi, Beesh, good morning. So in Turkey, what happens is been a currency depreciation, like you rightly said, it's around 40%. Our entire uh, raw material and packaging material which we are using in Turkey is all indigenized. So there's hardly any element which is uh, being uh, imported from outside will get impacted. That said, whatever base raw materials like SLES, etc., that is coming into Turkey because Turkey doesn't produce on its own. So that uh, is in dollar denominated and which gets impacted by the currency and which has led to some sort of gross margin contraction in the Turkey market. So that is the cause of concern which is there in Turkey on account of currency depreciation. So, but what we have done in Turkey is we are trying to put focus on our export sales from Turkey to outside, to the US and to the other markets like MENA and the CIS markets. So export as a percentage of Turkey business has gone up, which is all dollar denominated. So which kind of compensates for the currency translation losses and uh, the uh, losses that we have on account of depreciation. Sure. My second question is on your uh, Pure Herbs, a uh, lot of new launches which you have done in Q3 and earlier also. So, uh, like immunity products, are these also indexed to the COVID waves? Uh, that's one. Second is, how do you plan to scale this up? Uh, are you engaging with where? Are you going to do a uh, lot of mass media? Uh, so, uh, specifically, Haldi, Avla, Tulsi and Giloy, for example. Uh, will be very indexed to the COVID wave and will fall off when uh, there is uh, much lesser cases. So, uh, how do you balance between the portfolios? Some products will be more structural, uh, but some will be very uh, linked to the COVID. So, I just you the penetration of healthcare and nutraceuticals in the country is very low. It's sub 10% as compared to developed countries. The penetration is in the range of around 40-50% if you compare it with Southeast Asia and here. That said, the single herb market in India is roughly around 10,000 crore and we are, we are lagging behind and a lot of other companies have taken a first mover advantage ahead of us. So we have a lot of catching up to do here. So we've introduced the single herb range last year 
and uh, we've got almost around uh, five to six products in that uh, range. We're continuously improving or in, in, introducing our range, but we are doing it in a staggered manner, one by one. So like in the current quarter, you saw introduction of two new single herbs coming in, which is Shatavari for women's health and Arjuna for healthcare is what we introduced. But uh, Himalaya and Patanjali are way ahead in the race in terms of the single herbs, and we are catching up. And Dabar has the credibility and the heritage and the trust of the consumers, which uh, will be, uh, you know, taken into consideration. We'll be launching products at a very fast pace. The category size, as I told you, is around 10,000 crore. So, and uh, we are hardly having a turnover of around three to four crores in this category by this new introduction. So, the headroom and the space for us to grow is absolutely huge. And this is just not single herbs. Single herbs can be pivoted on uh, ingredients or on benefits or also on nutraceuticals. So, we are... Uh, continuously working on the journey to uh, work on innovations. Are they COVID contextual? Answer is yes in the short term, but structurally the market sizes are very big and the penetration are lower in the country. So there's a long term headspace for us to grow this business as healthcare for us. As far as Amla, Giloy, Tulsi products that you talked about uh, was concerned, yes, during COVID there was a huge tailwind and we had a huge growth. If you look at in the current quarter, because of the tailwind not being there, uh, we have seen a little bit of compression in the turnover of these brands, which is drops and also juices, which had gone up by around 100 or 200 percent uh, last year. So there has been some compression, but that has been more than compensated for the other parts of the portfolio. Sure, I had one question on the real health. Uh, Chia seeds and pumpkin seeds. So, how big is the market? Uh, with your focus, will be essentially on the e-commerce and your earlier uh, e-commerce kind of products like ghee and uh, premium, say uh, mustard oil, etc. How have they done? Right. So, first of all, what we've done in the real brand is the real brand earlier was limited to only beverages of niche. So now we have uh, created three sub brands under real. One is called a fruit power, which is going to talk about uh, fruit linked beverages and anything to do with fruit. The second is called the milk power, in which we launched the Frappe brand. And that's the milk power, which is value added dairy is where we'll get in. And the third vertical for us is going to be real health. And uh, these are the superfoods that we'll be introducing under the real health brand. And therefore, chia seeds and pumpkin seeds are the superfood seeds that we'll be introducing here. They're basically salty snacks that we are introducing and got into this category is very big in size. So long term we see and we want to grow the real brand from a power brand to a power platform and get into foods category also and extend the franchise of real into foods. As far as the other parts that we introduce coming to the second part of your question is the e-commerce driven innovation. So uh, digital native uh, uh, innovations are rampant. So if you look at the overall uh, NPD ratio in the company is around 3.6% uh, in the current quarter, but in e-commerce space, it is in the range of around 10%. So we are very well geared or poised to exit at a rate of around 100 odd crores for NPD only in the e-commerce or the digital space. So we will end up at around uh, 60, 70 crores uh, broadly, but uh, next full year, I think we should be crossing around the 100 crore level on the NPD or the digital native brands for e-commerce space. And uh, on uh, uh, ghee and the mustard oil is doing exceedingly well. And uh, for the sake of uh, confidentiality, I'll not disclose the numbers yet, but our mustard oil has got very good traction uh, on e-commerce. And we are now uh, selectively rolling it out in modern trade also. And so applies with our ghee also. So we introduced uh, cow ghee. And now we'll be doing extensions into other value-added ghees like A2 ghee, et cetera, there. It's a little margin dilutive to our business, but the category size is so big that it, the scale more than compensates in terms of the absolute uh, gross margins in we, that we get out here. And last quick question. So uh, in beverages, uh, your market share has improved 520 bits. Is this a Nielsen data collection issue in the base quarter? Uh, whom have you gained uh, market share? Is it Pepsi? And you have expanded the TAM here. So which are the new products in beverages where uh, you have uh, the highest confidence? Right. Uh, first, I'll, ask me, I'll answer your second question first before I move to the market shares. 
the total addressable market for us, which was earlier around uh, 1500 crores, in which we were around uh, 64% uh, market share, has gone up to now around 10,000 crores. Because we have expanded from juices and nectars to now drinks, so that is what is taking the total addressable market to 10,000 crores, in which our market share shrinks to uh, around 10% level. So that's how we are increasing the total. So if I look at the drinks portfolio, total coolers and also the pet bottle drinks that we've introduced, and also fizzin that we are adding, uh, again we'll be exiting the year at around 100 crore. Of exit sales only on account of drinks. That's why you see this kind of a growth. And this growth is not uh, uh, a hump. I think this growth will continue because the TAM has actually gone up uh, to around uh, six, seven times, or even uh, more, ten times, the way we think. In terms of market shares, Real has been taking market shares from its peers, which is uh, ITC, which is Drop, V Natural. And a lot of other uh, localized companies also, and uh, the market share gains come on account of our increasing market shares in modern trade. In modern trade, if you look at the overall market shares in juices and nectar segment, is in the range of around uh, 63.6%. But I think uh, in modern trade, our uh, market shares were very low, almost uh, in the range of around 30 to 40%. We were lagging behind in South of India, so we've gained substantially. In South of India and also in West of India, where modern trade is very high, and we've uh, chipped away share from our competitors like Be Natural, very strong in modern trade. So our strategy very consistently is to gain shares in modern trade, which is lagging behind to GT. We are very strong in northern geographies now. Gradually, slowly, we are uh, building the business in West, South, and also the Eastern geographies uh, also, and the penetration of juices being higher in uh, South. And also in South, we are very low in 200 ml packs. So we've, uh, with introduction of 10 rupee price point, we are gaining shares in the 200 ml and the 10 rupee uh, price point segment. Also with introduction of the coolest brand. As far as Nielsen is concerned, I don't think there's any problem in the Nielsen data. We are subscribing to the Nielsen data, and uh, we are seeing these uh, market share gains uh, in line with the, our gains in primary and secondary falls in place. The category. As far as Nielsen is concerned, last year declined by around five six percent. On back of five six percent decline of the category, the category is going by nineteen percent. Compared to the nineteen percent category growth, we've seen our growth in the range of around thirty eight uh, to forty percent in juices, and therefore gaining share from ITC, Pepsi, uh, and other smaller players. So sure, that's very helpful. That comes from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manoj from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Mohit and team. Uh, a very pleasing performance, uh, you know, in the market context. Uh, so uh, good one and good luck. Uh, so two two questions uh, and then maybe a couple of ones if I may after that. Uh, so one, uh, Mohit. Uh, you know, over a long period of time, uh, you know, when I look at the pricing, uh, you know, it is let's say this quarter seven percent revenue, two percent volume, so five percent is price and mix. Uh, you know, five percent is a is a reasonably high number versus the trajectory what I've actually seen in Dabur over a long period of time. Uh, I understand that these are exceptional times, uh, you know, but then uh, you know I've I've observed earlier from a company's behavior point of view, there is a reasonable amount of reluctance. Uh, I don't want to use the word lack of confidence, but reluctance, uh, you know, given the rural exposure, etc. Is there any change in thought on pricing, uh, you know, as a vector for growth, or, or let's say, if you could talk a bit more about, let's say, revenue management, uh, you know, linkages to pricing, some top-down thought process here uh, with a medium-term objective. That's question number one. Right. Uh, so, Manoj, thank you very much uh, for your kind words. And uh, first thing on the pricing front, I think uh, one major priority of the company is to not to let the operating margin slip by. so therefore whatever inflation that we have we want to pass it on to the consumers or through some riddhi and the cost saving benefits at least absorb not to have the gross margin slip and that's what you see in the current quarter our operating margins have actually gone up by 30 bits despite the inflation there's some optimization on <coughs> advertising which has happened and uh, but a lot has been passed to the consumer in terms of 5% i don't say that there is any reluctance we look at the demand situation the consumption situation in the market the competitive intensity and the channel mix before deciding the price increases 
So if you look at the uh, price increases, what we've done, we've got three buckets of business. This is the food business, FC business, healthcare business, and the personal care business. The highest competitive intensity is in our personal care business. And if I have to bifurcate my personal care business also, if uh, the competitive intensity is more only in hair oils. So in hair oils, we've uh, let up in terms of taking price increases, and we've been very cautious and circumspect before taking price increases because we don't want to compromise on the market share gains which is happening in all the sub-segments of hair oil. So we have taken price increases, but the inflation is huge. Inflation is to an extent of raw material like uh, which gets into there, which the hydrocarbon link is in the range of 50% plus uh, is the commodity price increases. And also packaging material, which is also, hyper, is also linked hydrocarbon wise, uh, pet bottles and all, there's been a huge inflation hitting us. So we could not uh, pass on this entire inflation to the consumer. So we have kind of, uh, there's been a gross margin contraction only in the hair oil business, which is 10% of the overall business of Dabur. Now, if you look at the other parts of personal care business, whether it's home care, skin care, uh, and uh, oral care business, we've been able to offset the entire inflation through the price increases. And there is no cautious approach here because the market leader is taking the price increases, and so we take the price increases. And uh, if there is no problem. Only hair oil the shoe is pinching. As far as the healthcare business is concerned, uh, we have taken a 10% price increase in healthcare business because we set the pricing table and we have taken the price increases there, be it Chaman Prash or Honey or Honeyters or Pudinara. We have uh, more than offset uh, the inflation impact there. In food business also, while the inflation impact is not so much in our portfolio of beverages, we have taken a 1 to 2% uh, price increases uh, there also to compensate for the hair oil uh, uh, back which is happening. So I think our portfolio is pretty well diversified. If we face competitive intensity in one part of the portfolio, the other part of the portfolio comes in where we have the pricing power and we are able to pass it on to the consumer. So I think that augurs well for the future while we don't see any much abatement in inflation coming in next two quarters and hopefully uh, next fiscal year, uh, the inflation uh, pressures will moderate and uh, as we lap over the high basis also. And uh, But we don't want to let up on our operating margins. I hope we did do it. As far as NRM is concerned, net revenue, we are doing a, we are going to be doing a very structured exercise. And we did it in past Samriddhi. Once again, we are looking at uh, SQY channel wise pricing across the board by uh, getting engagement with uh, some outside consultants and which I'll talk about as and when uh, we get into that kind of an engagement on NRL. Very clear, very clear. Uh, 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 a lot of follow-ups on this, which I'll probably take it offline. Uh, quickly on the second, uh, you know, question or clarification, which I wanted from him again from a medium term point of view was, uh, you know, let's say healthcare as a category without really getting into sub-segments of it, including, let's say, starting with the Chavant Trash and, uh, you know, a lot of the existing products, uh, uh, including the medicines which you sell, uh, et cetera. Uh, if you could help us understand, because it's been almost now close to, uh, you know, 18 plus months of COVID and the consumer behavior changes, let's say, uh, you know, creating a tailwind for this category in general. Uh, if you could talk, uh, whatever you can disclose uh, in a public forum in terms of uh, the marketing side of it, let's say, how much of your growth has actually come from, let's say, you know, heavy users, light users, how, what sort of penetration gains, per cap increase. Uh, whatever you could, this is the point what I'm trying to understand here is, uh, you know, uh, let's say these businesses have done well. Uh, now, uh, how do I really think about, uh, you know, the growth rates for the medium term backed by some sort of, uh, you know, uh, statistical data? Thank you. All right. So, first of all, uh, you know, the healthcare category, I think we are in a great space. If you look at our growth, uh, which in the current quarter, and look at the uh, CAGRs for two years, our health supplement business, the largest chunk of our healthcare business, is uh, chugging at a CAGR of 11.2. Don't look at the optical 8.2% depression happening in health supplements because it was a, on a very high base of around 40-45% uh, growth which happened on Chavan Prash and Honey. But for that, our two years is 11.2%. Our digestive portfolio backed by the Hajmola brand is grown by around 12.2%. And uh, as mobility is improving and people have started going out, uh, that is doing well, 12.2%. Last year, we launched a Cola brand and a huge innovation happening on that. And this year we've launched Limcola. Limcola has been received very well in the marketplace. It's a tasty digestive 
and the tasty digestive category is huge we are again increasing the tam in the tasty digestive market and extending it to sprinklers and others and as we speak uh, uh, you know i'll let the cat out of the bag we already launched the uh, amla candies under the hajbola brand and uh, which is already around uh, 100 to 200 crore brand established by patanjali so that is come in here our otc portfolio is uh, ex covid contextual brand like health juices and health drops that we introduced is also having a two year cagr of around 15.2 percent has grown by 8 percent in the quarter our ethical business is grown by again 8 percent with a cagr of around 15 percent so overall uh, healthcare is again grown by around 11.4 percent uh, cagr for us and we are in a good space uh, that is the two year cagr for the quarter if I compare it a little bit long term for you to understand the health of the business, our two year CAGR on healthcare business is around 18.6, around 20% on nine year, nine month basis, which is YTB, which is 18.6, which is very healthy. And there is a growth in nine months by around 4.6, despite the high base in uh, health supplement. Now, coming to a little big picture, which is a very long term basis, if you look at the total market size, of the health supplement business is again is bigger and we are ex expanding the total addressable market here as i told you the penetration levels are very low in health supplement just to give you some uh, data and the numbers the penetration of chavan prash which uh, around two years back used to be four percent is now in the range of around eight percent and penetrations have consistently been going up if i look at honey also the penetrations had gone up but because of so many number of players actually coming in the market, the penetration of the market has shrunk a bit, but not to the extent what it was pre-COVID levels. It's gone somewhere in between. So that's why I'm not able to talk about the numbers so much because of the competitive intensity going high here. But the penetrations have gone down and the number of players have become higher in the honey category. But that said, as a share of voice, but still we are in the range of around uh, you know very low double digit uh, kind of uh, penetration levels in honey and as the share of voice increases number of players increase competitive intensity increase the, the size of the pie will only increase if i have to compare honey penetrations in india and compare to what honey penetration in the us we are sitting at the 110th level of what the honey penetration there so there's a huge potential and dabur is by far the market leader with uh, around 50% uh, market share across all platforms that we serve despite some claims by competitors that they've done. But we are number one as far as Amazon and all platforms are concerned. Um, so and we've gained around 180 basis points market share there. So a huge penetration uh, gain possible in this category. And uh, we've extended the honey equity into more into cup and cold. As you know that we've launched honey cup and cold now. And honey is the adjuvant which is used in medicine. So the potential and the scope and the headroom for growth in categories like honey and chavanprash is used in chavanprash. We've extended chavanprash into tablets. So suddenly, immunity-led tablet market is very big. So and uh, chavanprash is now getting extended into powders and into granules. We've gone into MFD category. Chavanprash was operating in a category which was sub around 500 odd crores. Now suddenly you start operating in a category which is greater than 15,000 crores the moment you get into MFT. So therefore that's the way we look at uh, the market size. As far as ethical business is concerned, which is again uh, 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 a big business and the backbone or we say, uh, you know, our core business, here we have only 25% market share. So we are consistently gaining market share from other players. 75% is all smaller players. Uh, which are west and south and regional. So huge potential to grow here. In OTC, we operate in three big sub-segments, which is baby care. In baby care, our market share is again sub-25%, and we've launched the baby care range, like you know, and we compete with J&J, who's the market leader here. So again, the potential of growth is uh, huge, and our penetrations are going up. Then the second space... Uh, is where we operate in men's health, where we have Shilajit and we are extending uh, products out there. The third space that we guys operate is in Cup and Cold, where we have Hanitas brand, and Hanitas is gaining market shares consistently. So OTC also a good space. So I think overall healthcare is low penetrated, and uh, our growth strides uh, continue through innovation and also investment behind brands. And uh, so that's me. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Uh, in, That's uh, super helpful, Mo. 
has been super helpful, very comprehensive. Uh, I've got few follow-ups uh, because it was so comprehensive, which I'll take it offline. Thanks for that. Uh, one last thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back in the queue. Uh, uh, you know, you have a, a kind of started, up, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, harnessing the, let's say, the e-com opportunity, uh, you know, by bringing some products from international. Uh, is there a case for accelerating this? Because you already have, uh, let's say, the skincare portfolio which you have built, uh, you know, in the international portfolio, for example, right? I mean, so, or or the lot of packaging innovation which you've already done, up, uh, you know, in the international. The products look truly really very different versus what's otherwise, uh, you know, available in India. Uh, so there is a there is a product angle there, there is a packaging angle there, uh, etc., which you could, uh, you know, really use uh, internally, uh, cross pollination, right? If I may. Uh, so, or or is it just that in the current prioritization, because a lot of these things would actually need a lot of, well, let's say, gestation investments. So, how do we think about this as a vector for growth with a three-year view? Thank you, sir. Yeah, so, as an e-commerce, is a big future pillar for growth for us. Uh, and like I talked about, uh, you know, cross-pollination opportunities definitely exist, and that's a big growth vector for us. So our total NPD contribution on e-commerce is 10% as compared to the overall company, which is around 3.6%. The partly is coming from international cross-pollination and partly coming from identifying categories to underserve in India and where we have a premiumization possibilities on e-commerce where the ticket sizes are larger here. That's why I told you that almost 100 crore exit rate will be our NPD contribution coming in from e-commerce today e-commerce will be around 6%. In the next four years, we are looking at uh, this business becoming around 15% uh, of our business and is doing very well and backed by uh, innovations here and premiumization here and across different platforms, we'll be rolling out whether it's a grocery platform for foods or it's a Amazon platform which is amenable to personal care or it's a pharmacy platform for like one NG and NetMed. So it offers potential for growth across all the verticals of business and we are working very closely. So not just international business, we also have a business like New You, where we are very strong on uh, personal care. That also offers a good opportunity for cross-pollination here. So we are working on the same. But we are a little mindful, uh, Manoj, of the fact that we don't uh, put in products which are ahead of the curve because India market is still a little under-penetrated or un unevolved under evolved as compared to the products which are there in the West. Like we have, we are market leaders in serums, we are market leaders in Mamzer, uh, we are market leaders in the new age shampoos. While we have launched Vatika Select range, but the adoption by the consumer because all these no nasty products while we put out there and uh, it's acceptable by a few niche consumers, but mass acceptance is still uh, a problem. So we are uh, looking at it. The opportunity exists and uh, it's the timing of cross-pollinating it. It's all there as part of our uh, portfolio here and we can anytime cross-pollinate. And the investment requirements on uh, e-com and digital native brands when it is sold on a public platform like Amazon, etc., is fairly limited as compared to a mass market launch. So that is a definite cradle for new products uh, where we feed NPD and if successful, then we roll it out in modern trade. So it's a great uh, playbook that we have established and we are working on the same. Loud and clear. Good luck, team. Thanks, Thank much. you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in conference, please limit a question to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for this, uh, and congratulations on the performance. Uh, just one bit, uh, I mean, two questions. First, uh, is there any uh, further price flow through that is expected or is taken in fourth quarter? Or would movement back to, you know, historical margins in the gross level be more linked to moderation in commodity costs as we use other levers to maintain EBITDA in the near term? All right. So a couple of levers uh, for offsetting the inflation. Uh, number one, we've taken price increases, second round of price increases in quarter three only, and there'll be a flow through impact which will happen in quarter four. So exit market shares, uh, exit uh, price increases uh, impact will definitely be there in the quarter four, and our gross margins in quarter four will be better than what we see in the quarter three because of the flow through impact coming in. But that said, the inflation impact is not mitigating. We are seeing continuous inflation despite a base of 
4-5% inflation in last year. On top of that, we are again seeing a 4-5% inflation. So the company may have to take the more price increases uh, going forward. So one is the price increase, and uh, we are mindful of, again, elasticity of demand playing out here with the price increase. So the second vector will be our Samriddhi savings and cost savings. Third vector will be leverage uh, happening with the scale building on indirect and SNM overhead. So all these factors will play out to try to take up the gross margin levels to the current year average, at least uh, for the next year, so that we don't impinge upon our advertising uh, for maintaining our operating margin. That's the way we are looking at this. Abhi. Okay, clear, clear. And uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the, you know, the, the rural industry kind of demand. What, in your view, is driving this weakness? And any thoughts on when do you expect the pickup to happen? Uh, I can clearly read from your comments, and please correct if I'm wrong, that we should be targeting stronger than industry growth because of uh, distribution. But still, would love to hear your thoughts on how do you see the macro playing out. Right. Uh, I don't know whether your question is about the macro or your question is about Dabur or um, is it both. It's it's rural macro uh, from your thought process. And, you know, do you expect this divergence to kind of sustain given we still have that close broad dividends right on Right. So what we see is uh, if you look at the macro and what the syndicated data actually tells us that uh, rural demand is uh, lower as compared to the urban demand and we see a 10 percent growth in value happening in urban whereas in rural it is a nine percent so rural is uh, flagging urban from a macro syndicated uh, data that you see but if you look at and if you this is the more value data and it's all price driven now if i convert this into volume we find that uh, in the current quarter what syndicated data tells me is that volume rural is minus four as compared to urban, which is uh, around flat uh, as compared to last year. And this has been moderating, moderating quarter after quarter from first quarter, uh, if you see. In first quarter, the total value growth the, uh, in the entire, as far as the syndicated data is concerned, it was in the range of, I think, around uh, uh, around uh, 26, uh, I think around uh, 26%, and that's come down to roughly around 10% now, and the volume is also substantially moderated. So that's the macro. But when you look at the Dabur business, now Dabur business is completely other way around. For us, rural is chugging ahead of uh, urban. Our rural growth is around 7.5 as compared to the urban growth, which is around uh, 2.6 for us. So rural is definitely ahead, and rural comes on 7.5 on a base of around 25% of last year. And urban also comes on a base of around 18% of last year. So for us, definitely rural is uh, belying the market trends. And that is because of our investments ahead of the curve on building rural infrastructure. Our uh, village coverage has gone up from 55 to 88 as we speak. It's ahead of the target that we set ourselves around 80,000. Our village level entrepreneurs have gone up to around 8,000 now. And we've generated a sale of around 13 crore out of that. And white sales sales around 36. So all that is over and above what the market is talking, and therefore our rural growth are ahead of what the market is. And from whatever government uh, announcement that have come in post the budget, we feel that uh, that augurs very well for the rural FMCG space to actually pick up from here. We've seen uh, MSP outlays going up and direct benefit transfers happening on account of MSP directly to the paddy and the wheat farmers. That's going to augur very well. There's a capex investment increase of around. 35% and that will help generate better employment. Manrega enrollments are going up and the outlay of the government has gone down, but during the course of the year, they will increase, I'm sure, the Manrega outlays also. Uh, and uh, behind a good harvest, I think that all augurs very well for rural. It's a matter of time. We see the gap between urban and rural already reducing from the first quarter to the third quarter, and it's a matter of time before uh, rural will uh, pick up. And for us, around 46% of the business contribution is coming from rural. So we are pretty positive about uh, rural and the rural business pickup is uh, happening for uh, us. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue for three minutes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. First one uh, on uh, seeds and nuts market. You currently have some niche products introduced: pumpkin seeds, chia seeds. Would you consider entering larger categories of nuts such as dry fruits, which is a largely unorganized market? Uh, still, there is a work in progress happening, but yeah, uh, we are looking at uh, a sub brand of Real called Real Health, and we'll get into most of the superfoods out there, which are more. So we are working on the same. For the sake of confidentiality, I am not able to talk about it. Would these uh, categories have lower margins? Much lower margins. I understand that uh, target market could be much larger, but uh, uh, some of them will be commodity categories. Not really. In the chia seeds and this thing, our price point. This is margin equitative business for us. So our base margin in the food business is the range around 46, 47%. is all higher and equitative of that and this e-commerce space so we are find these are premiumization initiatives for us sure 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 second when on the 10000 crore beverage market what is the market share aspiration over the next 3 to 5 years and uh, like the like glass like f2 is like phenomenal in terms of uh, growth uh, it like what's really driving it i understand if you entered into new categories how much are they contributing and even uh, if i look at the market itself very strong growth 80 90% what what's driving the market growth in the beverage segment see the market growth uh, is being uh, driven by low basis of last year because there was a covid situation and out of home consumption was impacted and also institutions horeka hotel channel all that were impacted So the base was very low on back of a low base. Now you are seeing the market growth of around 19%, uh, which is coming in. As far as Dava growth, which is the uh, 2x of what the market growth is, is on back of NPDs that you rightly said by increasing the TAM, and uh, that's what uh, we have done. And uh, that I told you, exit rate will be around 100 crore, but the market size is huge. We will be around 10% market share in this huge category. and uh, we have aspirations of taking it to around uh, 20% uh, going forward that's our aspiration but gradually slowly we build because the infrastructure requirements in the rural penetration requirements or the urban penetration requirements also different uh, which is different from juices and nectars where we are present in so as we inch up our market share we'll be ramping up our infrastructure and uh, then we will grow today we have a huge uh, head space Uh, in terms of our infrastructure and juices and nectar which is being uh, used for the drink space also and we'll be extending it so we are changing our organization structure also a little bit in the company and we are creating a, a different vertical for the food business to provide a thrust on building infrastructure and also building innovation as we speak yeah just one last question uh, any uh, thoughts on the pli scheme uh, and the benefit which you expect from that over the next uh, few years yeah so we applied for the pli and we've been uh, fortunate to get the pli uh, approval done and uh, there is a roughly 170 crore of benefit that we've got on back of our investment of 550 crores which happened in the indoor plant on the a uh, juice line that we will get up this will shore up our margins by 2 to 3% in long term this benefit will get over a period of next 5 to 7 years and uh, as we are putting the investment so around 2 3 notch up on the margins of the food business will be on account of pli understood uh, that's it from my side thank you sir thank you thank you Our next question is from the line of Akash Kapadia from Anivet Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. This is Prakash here. Thanks for the opportunity. Two questions from my end. You know, uh, baby products. Now we have a wide range. So if you could, you know, comment what's the game plan? Because you know there are 20 million plus babies born in India. Uh, Lal Tel has been doing well as a brand. Uh, it has uh, gained traction. and with some of these newer launches can this you know portfolio become 2 3x in the next 4 or 5 years and if you could comment on the current size that will help and secondly on chavan prash we've launched some you know new variants avela so is it at a test marketing stage uh, what is the price difference to the base variant if you could give some inputs that will help right so baby care we have uh, launched on e-commerce space so it's completely digitally native brand for us baby care we still haven't rolled it out to modern trade 
and so we are uh, watching the progress while it's doing very well for us and uh, we've got uh, good gains on bb and it's also margin equitative to our uh, business we are trying to compete the range again baby care on the e-commerce space before we roll it out uh, to selective modern trade and so we are in no hurry to scale up this business so we are uh, waiting and watching seeing getting the consumer feedback and uh, and making improvements in our portfolio and then we will be scaling it up but the potential is absolutely huge like you rightly uh, alluded to so that's how we are working but uh, we want to lal tel is our uh, power brand and a power brand which is only in the range of around 100 odd crores so we have a plan to take up at this power brand from 100 crores to a 1000 crore level that's our game plan for all our power brands going forward in long term and that's why this initiative of rolling out the entire baby care range because no company in baby care uh, exists in isolation for a product format so you have to be existing as a range and this range has to be promoted with medical practitioners and that's how the entire uh, credibility comes in with the consumer and that's the path that uh, will be working on on baby care sure that's that's clear and on that uh, chavan prash avela that where are we in is it test marketing is it a premium product ah oh, okay so Chavan Prash uh, uh, is. We have launched an extension of Chavan Prash. Chavan Prash today is sold under the OTC range for us, and OTC we reach out to around 2.75 lakh chemist outlets. And this vertical of the business is very different from the other vertical, which is the ethical business vertical, wherein we go to the Ayurvedic counters and sell our ethical products. Because Chavan Prash. Uh, moved from ethical business to otc business today ethical business doesn't have a chavan prash available with them so this chavan prash that we introduced is ss chavan prash is basically a gate opener for a ethical business and it's for the prescription market and it's much more premium as compared to what the existing chavan prash when we sold to the medical practitioners and not to the advertising group that's why the new chavan prash is coming which is a classical recipe from another uh, classical text okay okay and it'll be what one and a half to two times the base variant around two times the base variant understood thanks i'll join back the queue if i have more questions thank you thank you thank you the next question is from arnav mitra from credit suisse please go ahead Yeah, hi, Mohit. Uh, congratulations on a very good uh, uh, growth on the high base. Uh, my first question was on, uh, you know, your food growth. So, if I look at, you know, three Q F I twenty, which is the last quarter before COVID, you had about a two hundred crore turnover in foods and beverages, which has now become three hundred. So, you know, this growth uh, you mentioned about hundred crore annualized is coming from the new products. So, has the core uh, nectar business also seen higher growth, or is there? some other categories which have also come in here which have you know held this uh, 100 crore addition over this you know two year period uh, so all of as far as food business is concerned our business has increased in market shares we've gained around 540 basis points in market share as far as food is concerned and that market share gain is happening in the juice and nectar market so in juice market also wherein we have active brand and the nectar market we have a 1 liter mixed fruit juices so we basically gained market shares of 500 basis points reaching up to around 63.4 market shares the highest ever in the core space of the nectar to top it up we have launched drinks and in drinks our gain in market shares are very marginal because the category is so big around 7000 crore so that is very marginal therefore i'm not talking about market share gains there it's a core business market share that i'm talking about so majority growth that you see of happening a 38% majority is coming uh, out of uh, our core business in which we are gaining market share which i talked about earlier in modern trade in regions we are not very strong basically modern trade where uh, our national market shares are around 63 64% but our modern trade market shares are sub 50% so there we have increased market shares are much ahead of 500 basis point also 
on back of uh, good tactical schemes, consumer promotions, and we've gained shares from our lead competitors, which is uh, Trop or which could be Be Natural and others. So that's uh, on back of that. But that said, our future that we are looking at long term is an entry of drinks and 10 rupee price point, and there we are making big strides because that market is very big, and therefore now we started internally looking at not just market shares in the juice and nectar space, but also in the drink space. And we are tracking that very well, and that's got an excellent reception in the market space. Both our pet bottles and coolers, the 10 rupee price point and Tetra Pak, and now we've gone into the fizz market also, which is a huge uh, 30,000 crore market, wherein uh, the share of uh, uh, throat will come from uh, carbonated beverages, which is Cokes and Pepsi's of the world. Uh, sure. What's my second question actually related to this is, you know, this 100 crore run rate that you have, as you mentioned, you've seen very good offtakes and there's no challenge in, uh, you know, offtakes in the market. Uh, so what is the constraint of growth here in the sense, given the size of the categories, is it your own capacity or is it that uh, you want to be at a slightly higher price point so you will not play in the belly of the market? Uh, and uh, therefore, how should we think of uh, potential, uh, you know, scale up from this 100 crores as you go forward? Also, if you could just talk about the distribution uh, a bit in terms of how much of your existing direct reach actually is carrying any of these uh, beverage products. Right. So, therefore, a couple of constraints here, Anna. One is, uh, uh, is capacity. Today, we are looking at third-party manufacturing. So, as the business scales up our drinks, we'll be putting up our total lines, and we've got a PLI benefit also in indoor green field, wherein we are putting up two lines for the beverages also. This is both for Tetra Pak and also the drinks line. And as you know that the GSTs have gone up in aerated beverages. So that's also been a little bit uh, stumble that we've had. But uh, we're taking up the case with the government and there are big boys in the marketplace uh, who are also lobbying with the government to uh, reduce the GSTs on uh, the aerated uh, fruit beverages, basically. And we are looking at setting up our own units uh, still, plans are early. I can't talk about that, but uh, we are looking at plans of setting up our own green field for the aerated beverages. That is as far as the capacity is concerned and augmenting capacity. But there is sufficient capacity available in third party. But the moment you do third party, you have a margin downside there. So therefore, eventually, as the business scales up, we have to bring it internal. As far as distribution is concerned, today we are adding on the juice and nectar distribution. As the business scales up. Uh, and as it is scaling up, the way we are seeing a very strong reception, we are building a separate network of distribution, which is a END distribution, which is completely different from the way the distribution of JNN uh, is happening. So we are creating a separate vertical. We've actually created a separate vertical of food. As you know, there was a separate vertical. We're just scaling it up. The number of feet on street is going up. The infrastructure uh, is being ranked up, and we uh, have a different organization structure now to handle the food business going forward. So these are the two impediments that we see. But investment is no impediment from the company, whether it's CapEx investment or advertising investment, because this is more of an impulse purchase, and uh, you sell what uh, is seen on the shelf. So it's more impulse, it's more point of sale, which is important and driven by more distribution here. And just one last question on this, it was, you know, like homemade, you have this target of potentially using a 500 crore turnover. Do you have any such uh, thought on the drinks business on what size it should be in three, four years time? Yeah, so we are looking at around uh, five to six percent market share here, James, in next four years. But I am not talking about that. We are actually working on a vision exercise and we will have a separate forum uh, wherein we talk about a little long term of around four to five years is what is our ambition on the same. Okay, but thanks, uh, thanks it's so a five percent gain in market share in drink space. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks all the way. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suresh Pardeshi from Centrum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mohit. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations. Uh, just two observations. Uh, uh, when we look at uh, the international business, uh, we had a very strong growth, uh, and uh, on, a, on a high base, we have grown almost 8.7 percent. What I was trying to look at uh, uh, again uh, when we look at quarter four, our base growth was almost 21 percent ahead in constant currency. So, in the current circumstances, 
how one we should look at uh, the growth in the international market and maybe if you can spare a minute explaining how one should look at the margin because largely you have addressed uh, these all issues in last two to three quarters yes sir so ibd is in a good space the way i see we are looking at a long term the full year growth of around double digit growth rate happening in ibd that the two parts of our international business are faring at uh, different rates first i'll talk about our mina region our mina region was uh, impacted uh, by high inflation happening on back of the crude where the personal care business one was impacted there was a margin uh, contraction which happened but on back of some really benefits and others we been able to uh, do a lot of uh, mitigation out there and the business has grown by around uh, 5 to 6% uh, in the mina region the hard currency regions like north america has done very well with namaste business has grown by around 20% our turkey business i told you has grown by 14% and nepal business is uh, doing exceedingly well growing by around 17% so overall i think the business is on a good trajectory of uh, growth and double digit is what we are looking at uh, as a long term uh, growth uh, coming uh, on back of uh, a geography expansion and b our market share gains uh, in the respective markets and market shares in all the categories in even in the mina region are uh, growing uh, well for us so as far as uh, margins are concerned we are working on the margins and we are taking commensurate price increases in all the categories you know the per capita incomes are higher so and we are at a low price point in most of the categories where we exist so there is a opportunity on the head space to take uh, the price increases and on back of that uh, we are looking at no margin contractions but margin expansion and we will see our operating margins only going up uh, in the international business as well yeah just quick uh, uh, observation on slide 6 uh, there is no mention of bangladesh business is it uh, by mistake or uh, the bangladesh business is not important for us so the bangladesh business is very important for us i think there is a huge opportunity in bangladesh bangladesh in the last uh, quarter was impacted by covid and impacted by some supply constraints which happened in bangladesh because of uh, containers not being available so it is a short term if you look at the cagr growth of uh, bangladesh uh, it is in high single digits so but we have some work to do in bangladesh that's why you don't see a mention out there okay my second and last question on uh, the oral care you did a fantastic job and you mentioned that you gained 50 basis point market share especially you're saying that you're targeting to number 2 what is it that's working and um, this is the product extension into the mass uh, natural segment uh, how big opportunity we can see in next two to three years and if you can spell out what is the current exit market share in the month of december for oral care yeah so our market share is in the range of around 16.4% uh, that's the kind of market share that we have in oral care and red tooth face is a flagship brand doing exceedingly well and gaining market shares on red tooth face we saw growth of around 11% happening on rtp where the category was growing at around uh, 6% uh, odd so we've gained market shares in uh, the oral care space and much ahead of the uh, the lead player our uh, herbal toothpaste that we've launched in south market and other markets also doing exceedingly well uh, for us and uh, we be looking at launching premium variants of e-commerce space also and to ramp this up but long term we will look at a double digit growth happening in oral care uh, uh, through our our uh, premiumization initiative and uh, other regional initiatives also thank you you will continue surprising us i don't know i uh, i hope it's on the positive side of the price thank you Our next question is from the line of Parsi Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to understand on the interplay between your margins, ad spends, etc. So I see this quarter, uh, while the EBITDA margin has expanded slightly, it is on the back of a double-digit cut YOY in the ad spend. And I'm assuming, given the innovation pipeline you have. uh you would need to increase the ad spends from the current level uh, uh so meanwhile i think uh, input costs have further inflated also 
so with a higher ad spend and uh, input costs also uh, sort of uh, inflating sequentially in q4 versus q3 uh, how do we look at the ebitda margins for the next quarter and i mean not particularly first about the quarter but let's say for the entire full year fy23 do you think there is a risk that the yoy ebitda margins will slip down Right. So, basically, the way uh, first of all, let me tell you that we will not allow the operating margins to actually slip by. If you look at the YGD numbers, our EBITDA margins have actually remained where it is, and they've actually expanded by around 999 uh, basis points marginal. So, we've been able to maintain the EBITDA margins for the whole business, and uh, that is what we will maintain going forward in the. next quarter also to have a full year operating margins not to strip by in the business that is something that we are working with and we will not let uh, that get compromised at all so that said how will we deliver that uh, your question is our top line growth is the first priority for the business so we want to drive top line on back of innovations e-commerce modern trade entry our gtm expansion rural so therefore when the top line is robust then we'll get a leverage across all the other heads so therefore we will look at our uh, manpower expenses leveraging we will look at our treasury income coming in a bit we will look at our indirect overhead actually leveraging and we are getting some riddhi benefits also our variable cost fixed cost all that leveraging and helping and growing at a lesser rate than a top line and therefore a positive leverage that is the first contributor to our uh, uh, management of the margin the second is price increases across verticals wherein we are price leaders and we are the ones who control the pricing table like i alluded to in healthcare we have taken 10% price increases the inflation may not be that much but we have taken 10% in food we have taken price increases in other parts rather than air oil we have taken uh, in other parts of the hpc portfolio also we have taken price increases and if need be we'll take another price increase another round of price increases also to offset uh, the inflation impact and uh, as far as advertising is concerned we will continue to invest behind our power brand and what we see is in advertising optically it may seem that we reduced advertising spend by 16% but what is not visible to you is the trade spend and the consumer spend and the other spend so if you look at that our overall spends have remained flat uh, overall ad pro has remained flat we have just uh, taken out resources from one bucket and put into the other bucket and manage so that's the way and in a inflationary in environment little bit optimization of the advertising expenses can't be ruled out so that will happen going forward also but we are not starving our power brand so this power brand architecture is working very well if you look at our power brand contributors 60 70% of the business their advertising expenses are in line with the top line growth so we've not uh, cut back on advertising expenditure in power brand If you look at the YTD advertising growth uh, for us, it has actually gone up by around uh, 16 percent. If uh, around the total advertising expenses have gone up by around 16 percent, ad pro expenses have gone up by 16 percent. So in one quarter we are moderated, but overall, if you see, it's not. And if you look at the absolute percentages, are also in the range of around 8 percent, and this will remain around 7 to 8 percent advertising to top line ratio percentages also. so we are not cringing we are continuously focusing on investing behind our power brands investing behind our innovation and trying to draw out the cost from uh, efficiencies in the business understood uh, secondly just wanted to understand your take on the price elasticity of demand for your products so uh, uh, do you think that uh, price increases will be uh, accretive to the overall sales growth or do you think there will be some uh, zero sum game between uh, price increase and volume growth and therefore the top line growth that you had projected uh, let's say 6 months ago whatever you had budgeted the same kind of top line growth will come through now so basically i must uh, first tell you our volume growth for the whole year if you look at the ytd 9 months ending december our uh, volume growth has been 13% is the business of aup our quarter volume growth is 2% now why is this is 2% while optically you see that volume is uh, reduced sequentially is 2% it's not the case 
my case stays or the tonnage growth in the business is around 11%. You know, my cases have grown by 11% because my juices are sold more as compared to my other portfolio. That's why you see a volume growth of around 2% here. So that's the optical uh, sort of volume growth because which is value weighted is what you see. As far as my question was more uh, looking forward for the next four or five quarters because still now in the nine months we have not seen very high price hikes. We have seen maybe a average price hike of 4% or something for the nine months. But going ahead as the price hikes pile on, uh, how do you expect the equation between volume, uh, price and value to play out? Is it uh, uh, sort of, do you think we will have to, as analysts, uh, increase our overall top line growth estimates or do you think it will just be a rebalancing between price and volume? No, no, I don't think so. I think that's the case of scenario of a market leader. If you look at our price increases, our price increases are happening in healthcare. Healthcare is relatively inelastic to price increases and people buy a cup syrup irrespective of it going up 5 rupees up or down. So it's pretty inelastic healthcare portfolio which is 30%. In the other 20% of our portfolio, which is a food business, again, we are market leaders and there are also prices and we've gone into the drinks market as well. I don't think there is a price uh, issue because we are into taking market shares and in personal care also, we are looking at our volume gains coming on back of market share increases. Not really as a price leader that if I take up the prices and the elasticity and it will become a zero sum game and the volumes will actually shrink. But yes, we have to be mindful of the category growth rates and we will continue to win in the marketplace and grow our business higher than the category growth by gaining market shares and that's how you see in the current quarter the business has happened and that's how we've been doing in past couple of quarters and that's the journey that we'll be reversing going forward. Understood. One last quick question if I might squeeze in. Uh, in the last uh, uh, couple of years, we have seen uh, uh, really uh, sort of a, sort of a revolution in the BPC space in India, in terms of uh, online brands, Nike, Purple, Miltra, everyone getting into this, and this space uh, premium BPC is really exploding. And I think uh, we have a gap uh, there in terms of our product portfolio. And I think uh, we have a clear uh, sort of right to win in terms of introducing a natural uh, 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 ingredient based or Ayurvedic based uh, uh, skincare uh, or rather overall BPC uh, kind of uh, brand. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Sorry, did you mention uh, D2C or did you mention BPC? BPC, beauty and personal care. So oh, something like a skin care yeah. or some related products to beauty and personal care is where I think, I know we have a small participation through Gulabri and Femme, but that's not really uh, fully capitalizing the uh, market opportunity that has presented uh, in the last two to three years. It's really exploded. So you're right, Percy, absolutely rightly alluded. And we are very conscious and cognizant of this opportunity, which is, coming up, especially for the digital native and for the e-commerce uh, platforms. And we are working on the same uh, as we speak and uh, working very aggressively. And we are not just open to organic, we are working on organic entries, but also we are open to inorganic plays here. And that's why we got a watch test of around uh, 5,500 crore kept in our balance sheet for that purpose, because it's a quick ramp up through inorganic. And there are a lot of startups which are available as and when we see a right valuation and more synergistic target, we'll get into that and ramp up a BPC space through that. And we've evaluated some brands also, but unfortunately, we've not been able to uh, get onto. So we are working on that space. And also, there is an organic uh, entry being planned. Uh, because, uh, you know, one thing is that in this space, uh, we have existing brands and existing brands have got their extendability issues. Like you said, Pem and Gulabari. But a uh, lot of work needs to happen. So uh, the team is already on it and conscious of this opportunity. Right, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Mohit. Uh, probably extending a little bit from, you know, the uh, what are the prior questions uh, is on your growth expectations on top line for the next year. 
uh, considering you said a large chunk of your you know revenues uh, or a significant part will relatively be inelastic towards price uh, and you always kind of targeted a high single digit volume growth uh, you know for the business overall so are we putting in a case that next year probably we are looking more at a big team kind of a revenue growth considering pricing growth is going to be more like you know 4 5 6% given the kind of price increases we've undertaken so far right so lapika we still in the process of creating an uh, our vision exercise for next uh, four years to come i think the work is already in progress and uh, i can't really uh, talk about the numbers uh, for next year but yeah for the current year definitely a double digit volume growth and a double digit volume value growth is what uh, we are we had targeted and that's what will be exceeding our uh, targets also so in the current year definitely it's a double digit volume and value and for the full year basis now for next year the vision exercise is underway and we'll talk about the numbers uh, as uh, the vision document is created for us sure uh, the second uh, bit that i wanted to check was uh, you know there's a lot of product portfolio expansion uh, by dabber over the last two years uh, is it possible for you to share what is the total sku size for the company today versus uh, what it was two years ago and i i remember if i'm not wrong you mentioned that the share of npds uh, in channels excluding e-commerce is 3.6% so uh, could you could you elaborate how you define this entity is it like product introduced over the last one year or two year or three year right so the way we see it the innovation is going to be the center stage of all the activities that we guys do and it's going to be an important pillar for growth if you look at the last vision last four years also around 4 to 5% of the business has been contributed uh, by the new products and so will be the case going forward in the future also and across all the verticals of healthcare foods and personal care and we see a lot of opportunity in uh, both uh, evolving our brands and also renovating and also innovating across our portfolio the total sq size uh, uh, in terms of numbers has uh, gone up from around 1300 sq or to around 1500 sq that said this is the npd introduction but uh, uh, we have also done the rationalization of the tail as we go along so we have rationalized uh, uh, quite a number of sq uh, uh, miss ankush is here and kush can talk uh, about yeah, it yeah. my dear question on this sku rationalization as well uh, last uh, year bengaluru we did some exercise and uh, uh, almost 15% of our sqs which were contributing less than 1% of our sales uh, we almost called and uh, we would be doing a similar exercise and we are making a governance framework around this as well you know to improve productivity and efficiency and that is you know be honest Sure, and and this definition of NPD is what you've launched over the last two years or three years, sir. Uh, yeah, the way we define the way we define NPD is last year and the current year. Last year and the current year, okay. And and the last bit, uh, Mohit was you know you uh, given this increase you know size of the portfolio mm-hmm. NPD. Of course, e-commerce is a big channel driver here, but any more changes you have made on the general trade or modern trade sales distribution infrastructure? I did. You did allude to something on the F and B side earlier, uh, but you follow a spec sales structure. Have you gone one notch down in that level to enhance the productivity per store? That's right. So what we're doing, Latika, is first of all, let me talk about the distribution system. So earlier we had three verticals for distribution. One is HPC, one is HP, and one is foods verticals. So what we've done is we've done experiments, and uh, in a couple of main towns. we have divided our hpc portfolio into hpc 1 and hpc 2 that has given us a very good dividend as we've done those uh, changes in the north market and we will be extending that going forward so the hpc portfolio will be divided into two that's one as far as efficiency is concerned for uh, uh, the productivity improvements in the sales we've already put out the edge score which is called everyday great execution which talks about line sales bill bill cart and how much time the salesman is actually spending so that's uh, more of uh, machine learning of the data and the heuristics that we have and then giving a push list out to the consumers so therefore the productivity is gone up our edge scores are consistently actually going up and we are bifurcating our sales force into bottom boxes and top performers top performers being rewarded and elevated in the company and bottom boxes being churned in the organization also that said 
a lot of sales force has been put on uh, third party payroll and uh, from the stockist payroll so that exercise is also happening as well as the foods vertical is concerned to provide focus as we go into uh, the drink we are ramping up our infrastructure and next uh, three to four years we'll be adding roughly around 900 feet on street uh, for the distribution uh, focus and uh, juices will be a big focus and this centrally a resource to drive the food business being created reporting to executive director sales also for us Sure. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ratika. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushik Pradhar from KB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Uh, you you spoke about the e-commerce part. So can you talk about the what is the current? Uh, I mean, how do you see the e-commerce fare three to five years down the line? So e-commerce today contributes to around six uh, percent of our business. In four years' time, we expect e-commerce to go up to around fourteen uh, percent of our business. That's the way we see e-commerce as a channel growing in the country. In five years or three years? And fourteen percent. Five years. In three, three to four years. Yes. Three to four years. Okay. And uh, see, in e-commerce, you have introduced this uh, mustard oil and all this. all the things probably at a little premium pricing so how do you see that that uh, uh, playing out those kind of products playing out and what is the long term strategy do you plan to introduce those things in the modern trade after some time absolutely that uh, for us e-commerce is a cradle for innovation so all the value added foods will put out there and as they scale up and we reach a threshold level of business coming in e-commerce then we will be rolling out in selective modern trade premium modern trade and then from premium modern trade to regular modern trade to of course and then to gt that's the way we will follow a life cycle of a brand going forward but the intent long term is to grow those businesses and build scale there okay okay thank you thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of krishnan Sandra Murthy from Motilal as well. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity in Congress to Mohit and team for a very good set of numbers and the correct environment. Uh, Mohit, my question goes back to the comment that you made about 200 to 300 basis point uh, margin improvement uh, on in the F&B business as a result of the PLA benefits. Uh, just to put this in context, uh, 100 crores of sales in drinks uh, uh, has this been margin dilutive for the category? And particularly now that you are uh, targeting to double that, would that uh, would that be lead to a margin a downward revision in margins, which would then be uh, reset to 200, 300 basis point higher because of PLA? Yeah, that is on the entire food business and the vertical that we have, which includes juices and nectars, and also the drink segment. It is just not limited to drinks, like maybe you understood it not. It's the entire business. and uh, we are looking at our business also scaling up and doubling the way it is uh, growing so the cli benefit will be happening on the entire business so that's the way it is the question yeah my question was more on will there be a downward reset in the interim because of higher share of drinks uh, 100 crores and maybe potentially to 300 200 crores of revenue uh, because drinks may be lower the margins than juices and nectar and uh, can you explain further uh so in the current uh, quarter which we are discussing yeah if there would be uh, drinks would have slightly lower margin but it is being more than compensated by improvement in margins in other portfolios and if you have seen the uh, margins uh, pbit margins as per the segment reporting the margins in our food business have improved uh, by 300 basis points so so if you look at the segment reporting which we have already published our food margins are going up krishnan so the pla benefit will only help and support that margin going up to add to that we have premiumization initiatives also in real active that we are introducing a lot of premium brands like we saw the crc the all that will compensate and the drinks drinks portfolio that we talked about is a little margin dilutive but not so much that also we are doing a third party today the moment we bring it in house i think then uh, our margins will notch up here overall Next three to four years, we are only looking at our food margins to go up. We have launched uh, milkshakes and uh, masala range of juices, which are also margin equitative to the overall business. 
very clear thanks a lot uh, mohit and brother thank you ladies and gentlemen as enough for the questions i would now like to hand the floor over to ms kagan aluwalia for closing comments thank you and over to you thank you for participating in this earning call a transcript and webcast will be available on our website soon for any clarification and queries you may please contact us wishing you a nice day ahead thank you very much thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen on behalf of 